is tea time. Cheers. I am Patricia Moore and I come on here week to week to spill my tea. What is my tea? It is my transparency journey. It is me sharing how I am building a relationship with Christ, how I am sitting with him, how I am learning from him, how I am growing, growing how I am being pruned. And I'm hoping that it will motivate and inspire, inspire you to go build a relationship with Christ yourself. That you will put aside everything that you may have heard about God, everything that you've learned from religion, and you go sit with him and you learn for yourself. All right, what are we talking about today? I'm going to raise my hand because I can say this topic is so real, right? And it's something we all have been before. It's something that some people struggle with, have struggled with, but it's something that we unconsciously and consciously do. And that's what? Being a hypocrite. <laughs> A hypocrite. We got to talk about the real stuff, y'all. A hypocrite. Because think about it. You may look at your kids and tell them, and I, hey, trust me, as parents, we always say, do as I say, not as I do, right? That's hypocritical to tell your kids to do something that you yourself aren't modeling before them. I know many of times we've looked at our kids and say, stop complaining. Like you'll do something for them. Maybe you take them somewhere and they are just complaining. It's too hot. I don't like this. Da, 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 da. And you're like, stop complaining. Just be grateful. Find something positive. And then how many of us know as soon as you get home with a girlfriend and maybe you had a bad day at work or maybe something didn't go right, right that day in your life. Maybe the bills are stressing you out. What is the first thing that you do? You get on the phone and complain. That's why I had to raise my hand. Because sometimes I have to vent. I call it venting. But it's complaining. And then I have to say, well, Lord, let thank you for allowing me to get that out. Because I have to now go back and find the positive in everything. Like, I have to get it out of me. But sometimes we complain, but we don't take it back to God. Sometimes we don't say, okay, Lord, I vented. I got it out. But now let me find the beauty in all of that. Let me find something positive. And so let's define hypocrite. And you know, of course, I researched and I had to look this up. So the writer says, hypocrisy is not a common word in the Old Testament, but the New Testament is rife with examples. This isn't surprising since the word itself comes from the Greek stage acting. It came to me acting a part advertising something on the outside that is not consistent with the character on the inside is the picture of hypocrisy. That is not my definition. That is what I looked up. There is also a word in the scripture because the Bible has to look this up. I have my Concordians Bible and I had to look up the word hypocrisy or hypocrite just so I can back this up with the word because I'm not coming on here just talking. I actually want to bring it home with God's word. But I will continue doing what I always have done. This will undercut those who are looking for an opportunity to boast that their work is just like ours. These people are false apostles. They are deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. But I am not surprised. Even Satan disguises, disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no wonder that his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. In the end, they will get the punishment their wicked deeds deserve. That's 2 Corinthians 11, 12 through 15. That's the word. Now listen. The thing about having a relationship with Christ that I love is that we can be honest. We don't have to be perfect. He loves sinners. God has a heart for sinners. But what he wants is your honesty. He wants you to walk it like you talk it. And I know many of us, we can read scriptures. I know I did. I can read scriptures. I can tell you scriptures all day. But there comes a day where we actually have to live out those scriptures like the things that we say even for me in this season a lot of the things that I say is because I've had to go through it I had to get down in that wilderness season and whatever God wanted me to learn I couldn't just talk about it because I had to walk it and Lord knows experience is the best teacher and God wants us to experience him not just to talk about it but he wants our insides transformed, renewed. He wants to get to that heart. 
And that's what relationship is all about. So we're not hypocrites just saying the word, telling people because I said that, but I'm not going to do it myself. I'm not going to model it. Don't watch me, but just listen to me. We have to stop doing that because there's so many hurt Christians. It's so many hurt people out here. It's so many broken people that need to see the real example of Christ. And how do they see that? They see it through our behavior, through our actions. And listen, the one thing God says, I can't point out a hypocrite. You know why? Let me tell you what the word says. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own eye? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. First, get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. That's Matthew 7, 3 through 5 NLT. Listen, I had to tell God, I have an issue. I have an issue with people speaking your word and not behaving. I have an issue with sin. I have an issue with hypocrites. But then I had to look in the mirror, right? Because I can see things. Like I told you, I used to be an auditor. I could see an issue. I could see a problem a mile away. I could sit back and observe and I could tear some things apart. But then God made me. Like I had to get in a position, a very humbling position, where I had to look at myself. And because he worked on me, I'm starting to give that to him. And I'm starting to say, well, Lord, if I see a problem, what is the purpose though? What is the positive? What do you want me to pray for? You, you allow me to see it, not to call them out, not to be a hypocrite, but hopefully to call them into Christ and to the renewing of their heart, their character, their mind, hopefully to make them aware of what Christ is calling them to be, not to just talk it, but to actually embody what we're saying. There are all kinds of sinners and things that people are struggling with, strongholds, generational curses, generational strongholds, soul ties, addictions. The goal is not to magnify the issue, like I just said, but it's to be honest. God can work with anything as long as we're honest. Because he didn't expect us to be perfect. And that's why he sent Jesus, because he saw the sin in us. He saw our behavior. So he's not expecting us to be perfect. But what he is, is expecting our vulnerability. A vulnerability, sorry. We want to magnify the God who is powerful in any situation. I've learned it's not really what we say, it's how we say it. Calling out sin can be offensive and taken as an offense. To a person who's not ready to be honest or face it. However, and this is the quote, the truth is it's a good thing when someone is appalled by hypocrisy because Jesus is also appalled by that. Rather than defending ourselves, it's a better idea to use it as an opportunity to point to Jesus. So every sin, everything we do points back to Jesus. The scripture says the time is coming where everything that is covered up will be revealed and all that is secret will be known to all. Whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be shouted from the housetops for all to hear. Luke 12, 2 through 3. I'm going to leave you with this. This is a quote. So if we are going to act like anything, let it be the acts of Jesus Christ. We are to be image bearers. What we represent on the outside shall reflect what is on the inside. This is why we always need to work on the inside, the heart. Christians can still be hypocrites, but with honesty and the grace of God, as we walk in step with the spirit, we can be transformed. All right, y'all. Cheers. And you know good. I'm going to take a sip because this is a work in progress every single day, moment by moment. Peace.